Welcome to The Real Story with Jeannie Ives. Well, we've got quite a bit to talk about today, and we're going to hit the topic of education and specifically academic achievement in some of Illinois' worst schools because it is just unreal. You won't believe this. Uh, but here with me on the phone is uh, Dan Calkins, state representative. He represents part of Decatur, and Decatur has been the focus of an extensive educational report by wirepoints.org. So Ted Dabrowski and his team went together and, down and looked at a number of the school districts that were performing poorly, and in particular, they looked at Decatur. The headline of the report is Poor Student Achievement and Near Zero Accountability, an Indictment of Illinois' Public Education System. The subtitle, just 7% of Rockford's black, 16% of Decatur's white, and 11% of Elgin's Hispanic third graders can read at grade level. level. Now, why do we focus on third graders? Well, if you can't read after going through third grade, then you're going to have a very difficult time understanding any of the additional educational material you need to, to know in fourth, fifth, on through high school. Third grade reading levels are extremely important in determining future success of the children. So the wire points, you can find the wire points report at wirepoints.org, and you can read it for yourself. I encourage everybody to read it for, for, uh, for themselves. Let me just go a little bit further here. An indictment of the Illinois education system, it reads, if what follows is an indictment of Illinois' education establishment, we don't know what is. If it isn't an indictment, it is. Of Decatur's public school third graders in 2019, just 2% of black and 16% of white students could read at grade level. In Rockford, it was 7% of black students. In Peoria, 8% of blacks. And in Elgin, just 11% of Hispanic third graders could read at grade level. Similar results can be found across the state. He is not kidding. Now, in full disclosure, I've been working with Ted Dabrowski since I first started as a state rep in 2013 on this issue and pensions and a lot of other issues. Ted is an education expert. He has been studying the education problem in the state of Illinois for over a decade and studying it intensely. Intensely, There is nobody better qualified to report on these numbers than somebody like Ted Dabrowski. You can take his, you know, his, uh, his uh, information to the bank. It is indisputable. Now, Dan Calkins, Welcome to my program. Thank you for coming in on this program. And I, I, I asked you to come on, one, because I know that you care about this issue. But two, this is your school district. This is Decatur. What can you say about it? Well, Jeannie, thanks for inviting me uh, in today. Um, it is our school district here. I, grad I am a uh, product of Decatur Public Schools. Uh, so it didn't used to be this way. I, I guess that's my point in that. Mm -hmm. uh, Decatur Public Schools used to be one of the top uh, school districts in the state of Illinois, uh, turning out uh, scientists, doctors, lawyers, teachers, engineers. I mean, we, we have a, you know, our alumni association uh, every year salutes uh, students from the past. I don't know what we're going to do uh, 10 years from now, uh, who we're going to salute, because this is this is just uh, abysmal. Uh, it, it, you know, and one of the one of the thoughts in, in going back to the civil rights era is that one of the worst things that you can do or one of the easiest ways to uh, deny someone uh, their their civil rights, their place in society is to poorly educate them. And this is what we're seeing. And this is a problem that I see uh, for the whole state, actually. But Decatur is, um, it's shameful. Well, you're not joking. I mean, there's no better way to deny somebody any future opportunity if they can't read uh, going past third grade. And in, in this case, you talk about being a civil rights issue. So it's 2% of Decatur black students can read at grade level. 9% uh, of overall, of all Decatur students, um, all right, uh, uh, I'm sorry, of all students, yes, yeah. white students, right. it's 16%. So you've got this inequity building. But even if you're a white student, only 16% of them read at grade level. I mean, th that's 
that's terrible. That's a terrible statistic. So 10 kids walk in, only eight of them walk out being able to read. I mean, it's it, Hispanic students, believe it or not, do better than the white students. I'm not surprised, I guess. 17%. Now, the state average, the state average for uh, uh, third grade students that can read at grade level is 22 percent. So Decatur's at 2 percent. That's really not a, that's no. not a very high bar. No, that's, that's <laughs> really. terrible. That's terrible. You couldn't run a business that way with a 22 percent success rate. You would recall the products every single time if tw- only 22 percent of them worked as, as it should be. This is indictment. This is an indictment on the entire system. Well, it, it it is, but you know, just to focus on what's happening here in Decatur, and I, and I'll tell you another sad part of this, mm-hmm. Jeannie. Yes. Um, I share Macon County with another state rep. Uh, <laughs> she's been uh, in the General Assembly for ten years. She's in her fifth term. A retired elementary education teacher who chairs you know one of the house committees on education and not a peep not a concern well no uh, yeah yeah no i know sue share very well so it's state representative sue share that you're speaking with and she came into the general assembly the same time i did in january 2013 and so she has sat on education committees her entire time there and she is now the chairperson of one of those education committees and she is a retired yeah. kindergarten teacher, and she's a retired kindergarten teacher from Decatur. This is her school system. Nobody should know un- and understand better the problems with this school system and has yet not moved the needle one bit in the oh, entire the time that moved. she's been there. Oh, yeah, right. It's the, the gotten needle, worse. The needle, yeah, it's gotten worse. The needle's moved. This just keeps going down and down. I mean, this is, this is the problem. Um, well, I'm telling and, you right now, it's not a spending problem. It's not a spending issue. They spend no. $15,000 per child in Decatur, which is not an expensive area to live and work compared to re- other parts of the state. It's not the suburbs. It's not the city of Chicago. It's not a really expensive market. And they spend over 50. No. They spend more than they do here in um, the Wheaton School District per kid. And, and Wheaton is one of the i guess better achieving school districts or at least it's you know, average has a great it's average hey look yeah. in wheaton even in wheaton yeah you know 10 kids walk in only five walk out able to read or do math exactly. at grade level so that's pathetic too i'm not i mean i'm not applauding them don't get me wrong um uh, but uh but i mean decatur spends even more money and you're getting no results at all what do we do here well I, th- I think one of the, the big problems that we have, is, is, as Ted has pointed out, that, you know, you look at the teacher evaluations and pay raises and the and the and I think the administrative burden uh, of this particular school district, which I'm quite familiar with, um, you know, we're not we're not putting adequate resources into the classrooms. Um, we're not. Um, objectively grading our teachers and we're we're trying I guess we're just filling slots I mean we're just grabbing anybody that was willing to come to Decatur and 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 sit in a classroom I mean this I mean it's obvious two percent in reading um one percent in math I mean this this these are these are African-American third graders math at grade level in the third grade, one percent. Now it's it gets pathetic. a little better in the fourth. Grade. And, and it's, but but these are the kids that we are graduating. These kids are going through the Decatur public school systems, and coming out of the other end of the pipeline, and they can't read. They can't do math. Okay, at, well let's take that a first. little bit further because Ted goes into detail in his in his report. He says, and this is according this, all this information, by the way, listeners, can be found online at the Illinois State Board of Education's website. At the top of their website, once you go to isbe.net, once you go there, go to you, then you can see at the very top line, you'll see Illinois Report Card. 
When you click on Illinois Report Card, then you go and click on Illinois Interactive Report Card. You type in the school district's name. There's a little bit of nuance there about how you identify the school district, but you can get there. And you can find out this information yourself. But in that report card, this is all official information. Um, the district graduation rate in 2019 was 74%. The percentage of 11th grade students that met or exceeded grade level requirements in 2019 in reading was only 13%. In math, only 11%. That's meets or exceeds. So, okay, so yeah. you're essentially in math. For the people that they graduate, they graduated 74% of the kids. Only one out of 10 of those kids was proficient in math. So, I mean, we're just, it, we're just it, passing kids along. It's stunning. I mean, it's, and, and, and we've known that. Yeah, we've um, known this for a long time. I'm going to go into some more data with you. Um, but here, you know, here again in this report, uh, Wire Points, uh, this is reading straight from the report on page five, excuses, it's titled. Wire, Prince, Wire Points went down to Decatur in November of 2021 to hear what district officials had to say about their student results. There we met with Jeff Dacey, Assistant Superintendent for Teaching and Learning, the district's new accountability manager, and Denise <laughs> Swathout, yeah, Chief Communications Officer, because of course you got to, you know, spin this, so you got to have your comms officer with you. Uh, the discussion at first focused on the pandemic and how difficult things had been over the past 18 months, which was their own doing, their own doing. They never pushed back. Oh, yeah. Keep the le least risky uh, uh, profile for COVID out of the classroom and away from their desk. Yeah, it's so stupid. Certainly Decatur, yeah. with its large low-income population, was struggling. But WirePoint's primary interest lay in understanding why the district's pre-COVID, pre-COVID outcomes were so bad. Because the, the, the information we rattled off to you. The, the two and the four percent that was pre COVID. Now it's only one percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, they verified Decatur's reading and math numbers were alarmingly low. Many of the district's problems, we were told, were due to lack of an established district wide curriculum in previous years. Individual teachers managed their own lesson plans. High turnover in the district's administration was also to blame. Every new administrator instituted their own processes and plans. More skilled teachers are needed, they said. More black teachers, too. Students need more robust incentives. Oh, we got incentivized students. And, of course, the district said it needs more money for higher salaries and more programs. Okay, $15,000 per kid. I mean, you could well, go. The, you could go to Illinois State University for $15,000 in tuition and fees. Well, again, this, is, this, this reflects uh, the heavy burden uh, the administrative burden that the school districts um, carry. I mean, you just name two people, and we could probably name 10 or 15 more mm -hmm. that are in the district's uh, office. Um, you know, all of the administrative people that, that, that pull out, you know, really, really decent salaries, and then their pension on top of it. So the cost. I'd be interested in, in, in how much of that $15,000 per student actually goes into a classroom. Uh, that would be a, something to talk to Ted about. Uh, yes. Well, if I hang on here because I have that information. Ha, ha, ha. Oh. Yep. How about that? Because I had this information up. So I'm going to go to the district report card. Hold on just a moment here. And we'll get that. And while uh, you're searching. Yes. I mean, it, it, you know, this is, I was a, a trustee at Eastern before I ran for the General Assembly down in Charleston. Okay. And one of the issues that we had was retaining students. And the reason that we had problems retaining mm -hmm. students was that they weren't prepared academically to go to college but yet yes the, you know the system um you know sends these kids to college they tell them that yeah you need to go to college and and get a degree so that you can succeed and so these these underprepared young kids you know 17 18 year old students show up on college mm -hmm. campuses right and, and guess what we're doing for the first year? 
remedial training. Remedial. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're, you're not remedial. lying about that because the, 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 the report card actually shows you that as well. The community college remediation, because the one thing that Illinois does, Illinois does a fairly good job about really tracking a lot of these numbers, which is, I, I think, very beneficial. So they, and in fact, they're, the Illinois State Board of Education has won awards nationwide for their website, and it is robust. You can find a lot of information out here, and I'm sure they would rather that you not find it, but I encourage you to go and check out their website. One of the things for Decatur, the community college remediation rate is 62%. Yeah. Those are the, so, right. so when they go to Illinois Community College, which we can track, we can track that, 62% of them coming out of Decatur require remedial coursework. 62, so you're re-educating them because, again, uh, community colleges are largely supported uh, by property taxes and state grants, state state uh, um, the state gives them yeah. money. They, there is a tuition fee for a lot of them, and of course, if you're very poor, you don't hardly pay anything. Uh, and but in some cases, people who are paying some things are taking on student loans. And what are they paying for? Remediation because they never learned it in high school. Is that fair? Well, it's it, I, not only is it unfair, but it, it it's it, it's a we we don't. You know, high school now isn't K through 12. I mean, it's, you right. know, we're now, we're now K through 14. Okay, back you to gotta the, go to, yeah. You know, you got to go to two more years of junior college just, just to become literate. It's so sad. It's it's so pathetic, but you don't have to if we would just upend the entire thing. Now, somebody needs to go in there and turn the tables over on all of this. Okay, you did ask about district finances for Decatur, um, administrative right. spend versus teaching spend. So if you go to the 2019 report card, because, of course, you know, in future years, they realized that people were starting to understand how to use these report cards. So now they don't – now you really have to hunt for it in the new report cards. But if you go back to the 2019 report card, it literally says that the instructional spending per pupil is X and the operational spending per pupil is another number. So the total operational spending – which includes instructional spending in 2019 was thirteen thousand sixty one dollars. The total. This was 2019. They're now spending fifteen thousand dollars. By the way, okay, uh, two years later. Um, so, but the yeah. in, the instructional spending part of that was six thousand three hundred and seventy four dollars. So less than less half than of the whole spending per pupil was actually going to instructional spending. Yes. Uh -huh. and, the, and, and that's then, a problem. Well, it's a huge problem because, um, because you just said, what what what's what what do the school district say that their solution is? It's higher salaries, higher teacher yeah. salaries. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're spending more than half of your budget on administrative issues, doesn't leave you a whole lot for teacher salaries and teacher, re, you know, retirement benefits and health care. I mean, it's, and that's the vicious circle. Another so, problem that I they think, talked about is an excuse was they said, if you remember, some of the excuses they gave was that they needed better trained teachers. Okay, this mm -hmm. is interesting. So they put that out when they met with Ted, the administration says to uh, Mr. Dabrowski, who did this report, uh, yes, one of the reasons is because, let me see how they worded it exactly, we need more skilled teachers. More skilled teachers. Well, uh, we also track how teachers are doing, how they are evaluated. And in Decatur, teacher evaluations say that um, that there are 97, no, I'm sorry, in 2018, 99.7% of the teachers were rated excellent or proficient. 99.7%. So, you, yeah. so you're saying you need better skilled teachers, but you're rating all of your teachers at proficient or excellent. Uh, any grade inflation in uh, evaluating teachers? Well, I mean, do you think, I think there may be two parts to this. Okay. Um, one is that there's a teacher shortage. Yes. And, and I think, I, I would presume that the administration would be really, really cautious about giving the, any of their teachers a, a bad evaluation, knowing that that's 
their exit. They're, they're not going to stick around. You know, they're getting a bad evaluation. They're going to leave. They're not going to stay here, which just makes the problem worse. Um, and I also think there's a lot of pressure, um, you know, as so far as uh, pay scales. If you have uh, teachers with bad evaluations, how are you going to go to uh, the, the, the school board and the public and ask for more money to pay your teachers when they they all grade out at less than a B average or a C average? Yeah. So I think th- I think there's 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 some of that psychology going on, but I agree with you. How can you graduate your kids? Okay with a 15% reading uh, at grade level, and and we're going to be generous, and 10% graduating uh, at grade level in math. I mean, how can you no. then look back at the teachers and the District 61 and go, yeah, yeah, you're doing a great job. Right. I mean, how do you do that? I mean, and then what? Well, I don't know, but this is not just a Decatur problem. It is a statewide problem. So in the second part of the report, Ted turns to other particular districts. And he looks specifically because we we do care and and because the equity term has been thrown around quite a bit. And that's why you're having all these diversity, equity, inclusion sort of conversations and these social-emotional learning conversations is because we got to help those who are uh, who are the most challenged, and so of course they're victimizing, they are turning into victims. Hispanic students, Black students, and saying that you know th- these people need certain help and different types of help. And then we're at the point now where you have Oak Park school districts literally coming up with um, race-based grading systems, which does nobody any favors. Everybody should have a certain standard. But in this particular report, we did he did look specifically at uh, some of the other school districts and how third graders are performing. So Rockford, only 7% of black students um, uh, can read at grade level. Peoria, only 8% of black students can read at grade level. In Quincy, only 28% of white students can read at grade level. In Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon, 0% of the black students read at grade level. 0%. That's not a school. That's a warehouse. Decatur, uh, 16% white. Elgin, only 11% of the Hispanic. Chicago, only 30% of the black students. Waukegan, only 16% of the Hispanic students, which is a largely Hispanic district. So, I mean, you've got lots of problems around the entire state with this issue. It's not just concentrated, and it's not just a black Hispanic issue. It's also a white issue. They're not getting educated either. Right. So what are we going to do about this? Well, Because uh, Illinois teacher salaries are the highest in the Midwest. Illinois superintendents receive well over 300,000 more annually, and they still has, have abysmal um, test scores. Honestly, what the hell are we going to do? Well, we talk about school choice as, as an option for parents to uh, take their kids out of these failing school districts. Mm-hmm. My concern, and, and I'm for that, I think the money should follow the students. I'm, I'm you know, it's just like in nursing We need competition. Business, we absolutely need competition. Yes. And, you know, even even though we had, uh, you know, residents in our facilities that were on public aid, if that resident left our facility, the money left. So we had to do everything we could to make sure that that resident was well taken care of, that their needs were met, and that their families were happy with their placement. Or they would leave, and they would go to somebody else's facility. Right. So, you know, I I think I understand that concept fairly well. If if we're going to talk about doing that in education, which I think would be a great step forward, are we going to have the same problem in in, uh, private schools, in these charter schools? Because... I know here we mm-hmm. we have a charter school, Robinson Charter School, in Decatur, and I don't think their outcomes are much better, much better than the public schools. 
Well, and you're right about that. They're actually not much better. Um, Ted goes in that into that. Um, yes, at the Robertson Charter School, only 2% of all students can do math and only 7% can read at grade level. So even yeah. on the, in those charter schools indicator, they are not performing well. But even charter schools, I mean, some of them have unions staff. So some of them are still under sure. unions. Some of them are under still state control and state mandates. This is where you need wide open school choice and you need to actually yeah. unleash the power of the free market to deliver education a great result. That's what we need. And we have seen it other ways. Yeah. There are other schools right. that have, have built a different model and um, oh, yeah. are doing better. Even in Chicago on the west and the south side, you've got people that have broken the, the, uh, the mold there and are you know, getting achievement out of uh, kids for, that are just as poor and disadvantaged as those in, in Decatur? Well, the, the, the charter school model is broken. You have to, yes, in order is. to start a charter school, 100%. you have to go to the local school district mm -hmm. and get permission from them right. to start a charter school, which then puts you under the control of the same administration I mean, it's it, it's 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 kind of a shell game. Yeah. Well, you, actually, yeah. I just want to bring something up on this podcast because education was very important to me when I was down in um, Springfield. I always sat on two education committees my entire time there as well, an education appropriations committee, and then usually a curriculum or a licensing committee. And um, you know, uh, when we did the, we did the education funding formula, which was a big food fight in 2017. I started to really dig in. I used a couple of interns to do my own analysis on quite a bit of things. And one of the things that I did do an analysis on was there, uh, the 17 schools, because at that time there were 17 schools that were literally suing the state and the governor over inequitable spending. Um, and so they, they wanted more money and thought more money is going to improve their scores. So... I put all 17 schools together on a spreadsheet. I put out their, their, their ready rate, you know, how many are, you know, qualified mm -hmm. or, or proficient, and then the students spend. And arguably, some of them were spending really low amounts. But <laughs> the conundrum is that some of the lowest spending districts were doing the best out of all the 17 school districts that were listed. Let me give you an example because then I've updated it to see since we've pushed 3.3 billion more dollars in education cumulatively in just four years. So from in F wow. be between FY18 and FY21, so 18 to 19, 19 to 20, 20 to 21, 21 to 22, I'm sorry, four years, four years worth of data. All right, I didn't, I didn't see the budget summary for FY23 on COGFA's website, so I didn't include that. But four years, we've pushed an additional $3.3 billion cumulative dollars into education from the baseline of FY18, from that baseline. And uh, what do we have to show for it? Well, look, let's look at these 17 schools who were, were suing the governor over inequitable funding. Uh, let me just pick out one of them here. Cahokia Community Unit School District 187. Uh, back then, only 5% of them could read or do math at grade level. They called it just a park score because, of course, we'd like to change up the test so that nobody can track this stuff <laughs> long term. So the, the test was changed. So now we have an ELA score and a math score with a new system. Back then, it was called the park. So they only 5% were ready. Well, now only 4% read at uh, grade level in 2019 and only 2% do math at grade level. So worse scores... But spending went from about $15,000 per kid to now over $17,000 per kid. And the scores are worse. Yeah. Uh, here's another one that I find very interesting. This is Carlinville Community Unit School District 1, Carlinville. Okay, back then, this is information from 2017, 43%, 43% of the students uh, performed at grade level. All right. And they only spent $7,500 per kid. One of the lowest spends in the entire state, $7,500 per kid. And they got 43% of them at grade level. Well, now, uh, even with COVID, they've slipped a little. But 41% have English language arts at grade level. And 34% perform math at grade level. 
and they spend only ten thousand dollars per kid. The average is in the state is uh, over thirteen thousand right now. So I mean, here's yeah. this is a good example though. Did what's the difference here? The difference not isn't money. They're spending less than anybody else on this this sheet, and they're getting better results than anybody else on these seven of these seventeen schools that sued. So it's it's not money. It's not. There's something else going on here, and I think we need to talk about that something else. And I think we're afraid to. So there you go. Man. Anyway, I'm going to put this chart out for you, for my listeners and, and everybody else. I'll be putting this chart out. It'll make it nice and pretty. You guys can. And I think people forget about this. They forget that, like, oh, yeah, 17 schools actually sued the governor back in, you know, of course, Rauder. We're going to sue the Republican whatever um and uh and you know what they're they're getting they're all making they're oh here's oh here's another interesting one grant community consolidated school district 110 back then 23 percent of the students were at grade level and they spent about just under twelve thousand dollars now they spend eighteen thousand dollars per kid and their scores are worse their scores are worse 22% read at grade level, 14% do math at grade level. You can't teach kids to read and write, and you're spending $18,000 per kid. What the hell is going on? Man, that's I know. just damn mm -hmm. And people that's like Sue just... Cher, people like Sue Cher, who wants to get elected again and knows education because she was a teacher for 34 years, and, and, and uh, her own school district can't educate kids, and she's done, done nothing about it except add on mandates from comprehensive sex ed to you name it. Name it. Oh, yeah. And I'm not oh, sure she voted for that, but I don't care. Her party did. Her party put it up, and well, she never put up a fight. No, 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 no. She's, she's complicit. Uh huh. 100%. Absolutely complicit in all of this. Well, anyway, I really wanted you to come on and talk to us because your your school district is a highlight of a major report that I think is going to get national attention. So, uh, what is your response? Well, I there's there's I think it's a multiple pronged problem. I, I don't think there's any one particular answer. Mm -hmm. um, societal issues, uh, COVID. This predates COVID, and I, I, you know, I mean, some of the things that you're looking at obviously predate COVID, but I don't think uh, I, I don't think the governor's lockdowns and and remote learning and mask wearing uh, have helped this at all. In fact, I think it's been very detrimental to our students. Mm -hmm. I think our teachers um, are uh, under uh, supported, perhaps and under. Uh, you know, the, we have administrators who are quick to pass the buck to the teachers when there's problems. Uh, they fail to uh, back the teachers. Uh, we have um, a growing broken home problem here in Decatur. Uh, a lot of single parents. And uh, we have, you know, a, a, a large, gen you know, a couple of generations of kids who... Uh, have come through this, this, you know, District 61 with these same credentials, mm -hmm. and now they're having children. So we, we're having uneducated people or poorly educated people having children, and, you know, how do you cope with that? And how does that, you know, what kind of a whirlpool does that put that family in? So... Um, I would, I think we go back to the money follows the student. I think that we should be working with parents uh, to make sure that their kids are, are getting the right education and that they are able to make the right decisions about how their children are being educated. Uh, and I think we need to uh, consolidate school districts to eliminate a lot of this overhead. You know, we have what the, twice as many school districts uh, in Illinois as the next state, but, you know, for the number of school districts. Yep. Well, it's just a lot of issues that need to be addressed. Unfortunately, the teachers union uh, holds a hammer over uh, the Democrats uh, in Springfield. And, 
And quite frankly, some of the Republican members of the General Assembly are beholden to the teachers union. Yes. And we've got to break that. Yep. We've got to break that strangle hold on on our children. Well, thanks so much. Um, we will be talking more about this, and I, I hope that you, your community, uh, it, this report is widely disseminated down there so that they be, can, can actually go march into their school board and demand accountability. Uh, it, it's got to come from the people, and so hopefully you guys can lead the charge down there and, and get this turned around because the, the people who can least afford to not be educated – because you know what, it, it matters that you can read and write to cer a certain level. They're the ones who are getting harmed by this horrible policy. Horrible. It's just, it's just it, sad. It, I mean, it is. Uh, it's a form and, of and, uh, and modern day Jim Crow, if you want, if you want my opinion. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. And we are putting these these kids that are coming through our district and others, but we're talking about District sixty one. We're putting them out in a society that's rapidly changing. It's becoming mm -hmm. more automated, more technical. And if you can't read, if you can't do math, if you are not able to do, you know, uh, reasoning and, and, yep. and, and, and you're not, you don't have a chance. And you end up in, in either poor paying jobs or no job. And now you're another burden on society. And it's a it's it's just a damning report. We'll get through uh, this election cycle. Uh, we hope that we have some good results uh, in the you know as far as the general assembly for the next uh, session. But uh, I can I give you a, kind of a heads up that there are several uh, people in this community who's on a mission. And they're going to be actively uh, recruiting and training um, uh, people to run for our school board. That's great. That, that's how the, you do that's it. That's one of the steps. Yeah. So we're Absolutely. we're already we're preparing for the next uh, election. Um, I think parents are finally figuring it out that you can't leave this to someone else to solve. Well, very good. Okay, you heard it, the real story from Jeannie Ives and with me, Dan Calkins, about education uh, across the state. Thank you so much, Dan, for joining me on my podcast. 